Get another uh, package in today. Uh, it's actually, I thought it would be coming from China, but it actually came from uh, New Jersey. Which is weird because the tracking and everything said it was from California, but whatever. At least it came from the United States. DMK Ultima. This is the supposed to be the cheapest bait casting reel you can buy on eBay. There we go. Good solid weight to it. Let's see. There we go. It's a left handed one. Brake system. Uh, it's about the same weight as my uh, my Abu Garcia. It's got the 631 gear ratio. Uh, like I've said before, when you buy cheap Chinese stuff, anything that actually has a brand name is probably a, a decent purchase because they're that means they're proud of it. Good. Yeah, it doesn't have a whole lot of free spin like the Abu Garcia does, but should, that could just be this. Let me see. There we go. Keep spinning pretty good there. It's got a good balance to it. Lighten the drag a little bit. Pretty good balance to it. I like that. Uh, movement seemed to work. The uh, whatever this thing is here on the drag seems to wobble a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. This metal uh, wheel here wobbles, but that's all right. It's got some. Yeah, the handle moves a little bit too. So the this must be a little bit bent. But I mean, it was fifteen dollars. I mean, it seems to have some pretty good pretty good balance to it it doesn't have it's only got the uh, the tensioner over here it doesn't have the brake on this side or the uh, the gear I forget what the thing is called but the uh, the adjustment on this side it's only got the adjustment on this side this is uh it's actually got a name brand on it dynamic outdoors equipment from uh, China they've got websites on there for everything It looks like it. So far, I'm impressed by the initial quality. Uh, came with a nice box. I think it could have had a instruction manual. I mean, this looks like a warranty card or something. So yeah, it's the DMK Ultima DM120LGS. Uh, it's got all the information here on the back. On the back. And to test it out, I'm actually going to be using I've got this it's actually an Abu Garcia rod uh, I've tried out before uh, yes I know this is a spinning rod but it's a broken repair job uh, I found it on the ground <laughs> while fishing this is a $15 reel it's actually got a pretty impressive logo in here on the inside if you're upset that I'm going to put a bait casting reel on a spinning rod, then that's just too bad because when it comes to the point when you're using broken rods and cheap reels like this, then the difference between bait casting and spinning really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do any fishing today, but I'm going to take it out tomorrow. I'm going to get it spooled up right now, take it out uh in the next couple of days and fish with it see how it works so uh i'll see you then
And since I got that reel for about $15, and the rod didn't cost me anything because I found it, I decided to do a $30 challenge. We'll see what I can catch with the broken rod, the cheap reel, and about $15 worth of gear. I went to Walmart. I spent $12.57, four items. Uh, I didn't need any of these because I got those generic ones. But these are the five inch. They got a little bit more weight to them. Since I'm using going to be using a bait caster, I needed something with a little bit more weight so I could get used to it, especially with the new one. Uh, to go with those, these are probably the best thing you can buy if you're a bass fisherman on a budget. Uh, it was like two dollars for forty hooks, assorted different hooks. There's stuff in there for Texas rigs, stuff in there for just about everything. Uh, I got two of those, and then I got this was about four seventy three if I remember correctly. I needed, I wanted one in this color, uh, and I wanted something that dove down a little bit deeper than all the stuff that I currently have. Uh, everything I have is shallow running. This is a uh, six to eight feet, which is actually probably too deep for places I usually fish. But I wanted something that'll at least run across the bottom in like four or five feet. So uh, this ought to work. Because uh, the other day, when I did my uh, Jenko video, the generic Senkos, uh, we spotted a bass that was easily four pounds. But he just wasn't interested in anything except for the crankbait. But he was down on the bottom, and he would chase after the crankbait, but it wasn't running deep enough. So by every time he would go after it, he would, it was already close to me, and he would see me and turn back around. So um, something like this ought to work in that kind of situation. So, total, that was about $15 for the reel. The rod was free. $12.57 here. Decided I'm going to do a $30 challenge. And uh, we'll see what I can catch. This is this is pretty much everything I always fish with. I always have, like, Sanko or Yumdinger and a crankbait. That's it's pretty much all I need. And there's plenty of other stuff you can use, but this is all I've really needed, so... The water looks pretty clear. There's a lot of bait fish up across the top. Should be a pretty good spot. There we go. Get the first test cast out of the way here oh. it works but I gotta adjust the drag and all that and I definitely have too much line on it once you figure out the touch and you would make your adjustments the casting is just as easy as any other reel It's hard to get that distance cast without backlashing it though. But like I said, it doesn't matter getting used to it. What? I think I got a fish. I'm not sure if I got a fish or not. I got something. What is that? I adjust my drag. It's not fighting that hard, but it's hard. It was hard to reel in there for a minute. And I got accidentally caught a bass while I was getting the backlash out. <laughs> not the biggest one around here, but Well, at least there's a fish here. 
I just uh, hate it when I catch them with the backlash because I don't get to set the hook right and they try to swallow it. That's what happened here. Swallowed it, but it didn't go too far down. I should be able to get it out. Why am I putting these away? All right. Got it. Let's see if I can get down. Holy crap, where the hell did that come from? Uh, that was not there a minute ago. I don't know if you can see that, but while I was distracted with the fish, there's a big snake right there. And it's got diamonds on its back. It doesn't look like a regular uh, brown water snake. So I'm going to move over here. Try to revive this guy. Ugh. Ugh. Well, can't go under the rock, stupid. There you go. You're not going in the right direction. There he goes. He'll figure it out. And the snake is gone. I don't know where it went. All right, I'm on this little beach area here. And I just saw something big breach the surface down here, so that's not where I meant to cast. Got him that time. Let's see, what is it? Uh, I think it's bass. Yep, bass. This thing is, you know what, when it comes to reeling in a fish, this reel's a little odd. This one's fighting pretty good. There we go different kind of color on them. <laughs> this is actually a different species of bass. The other one I think, well, it's got a different shape on the top of his mouth anyway. I really wouldn't expect him to catch anything right here. That's pretty, pretty good. I don't even have a barb on there. What's it stuck on? There we go. Pretty good day so far. I might. This is probably what I saw breaking the surface over there. Still recording? Yeah. There we go. And there he goes. Now the reel, I guess maybe it's the drag system or something, but the first fish, I had the same issue with it. I don't know if you could see it. You could probably see it better on that one because that one was a little bit bigger. But I was having a hard time reeling it in on this reel. Maybe it's the gear ratio that I'm not used to because I'm used to the uh, Abu, which is a uh, has a slightly different gear ratio than this one does. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know, but it's just different. It's a little bit, you get to feel a fight more and it takes a little while longer to bring them in. I don't know if you can see it with my hand down here, but I'm constantly making little adjustments on it, on the drag and on the, uh, the tension. Starting to hear more thunder. It does look like a storm down that way, but I got another one. I got another one. It's always with the backlash. This is a little one though. What is this? Another little bass. This is a baby. <laughs> nice coloring on this one. Oh, I barely hooked him. I guess that counts as a foul hook actually. Let's get this one.
There we go. Ah, I'm not even gonna bother taking a picture of this one. He's too desperate to get away. There he goes. Get bigger. That last one couldn't have been longer than the, the yum dinger. It's about five inches. It's probably a. Uh, well, it's definitely too much of a deep diving crankbait for this area, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And, uh, yeah, it's not too big though, because there are some the fish out here big enough to eat this. So I'm gonna have to call it here. Uh, partial success partial fail on the uh, challenge I didn't catch anything on the crankbait and but I got a couple on the uh, yum dingers the uh, reel is working pretty well I, I gotta say I'm happy with that it's got a few problems but considering what I paid for it I mean it's it's worth it's worth it for what I paid so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here now Pouring down rain. I'm underneath the, the bridge here. Uh, the water level hasn't started to rise just yet, but uh, it's going to. It's probably going to go up a couple of feet. So uh, this is why I fail my uh, challenge. So I think I get a rain check, literally. So uh, uh, I might. I'm going to come back out and try this uh, crankbait again some time. Uh, maybe I'll go somewhere else. Uh, it's probably gonna be a week or so before I go fishing again, just because this is gonna ruin all my my ideal conditions. So, uh, 